Well, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. It's been a while since we had a sort of a project video, so this is what I'm doing. Uh, I've got the milling machine in bits, and the reason for that is that looking at the front of the spindle, this mill runs clockwise. However, the, the end mills come in from the back. So if you, or, or the, the cutters come in from the back. So if you fit an end mill, what you find is that when it's spinning, the clock, the, from the back, the cutter's actually spinning anti-clockwise. So it doesn't cut anything, which I discovered a little while ago. Now I bought a three-phase motor and a VFD and I've sort of making some inroads but that's another video at this point what we need to do is assemble these bearings because these have got oil throwers in them I had to keep the oil inside when it runs anti-clockwise we're going to have probably an issue with oil spitting out um, left and right when you run it backwards at any speed so what I've decided to do some consulting amongst the, the brains trust that's youtube is to pack these roller bearings there's two of them and they're still pretty good i don't think there's anything wrong with them and i think we're going to put them back in we're going to wash them up and we're going to pack them with some decent grease just a little bit and put it all back together plug the holes and hopefully we won't have to touch this for quite some time to come first job though really is to put a plastic bag around this or mask it up and give this a polish in the lathe. So let's get in and do that. So I'm set this up and you can see this, or you can probably see, we've got a, you can't see much at all. We'll try that. Um, probably you can see there's a bit of rust here um, just oil marks really. There's a bit of rust on this one. Uh, this doesn't actually do anything, but this has got... Someone's grabbed that to undo something and that's a bit ugly. There's a burr here somewhere, which means that this little bush that slides on here won't run across here properly. And the threads could do with a bit of a wire brush too. So I'm just going to go over that with a little bit of fine emery paper and just clean that up so that this tube slides on here without too many interruptions and so that the pulley slides on here nicely without too many interruptions and so that some of these marks here which don't actually on this surface that don't really do much are gone so that's the project now so i've washed some of these bits up um, this had I put masking tape around this so that we didn't get it full of dust too much. And I've cleaned this up a little bit here. You can't actually see it because the pulley covers it. But I like things to go back together nice. We'll put this on here. See that's out of sight completely. So We'll just clean that up and this goes on here nicely. There's a couple of dove, like a couple of woodruff keys in here and another one in here that's actually missing. This hasn't worked for some time, I imagine, with this pulley on the end. This slides on here nicely now. And I think this is a pretty good fit too. It might be a fraction loose, but that's how it was. I've only taken a little bit off the end here where the burr was and I've cleaned this up which is only where the oil splasher goes which is this piece here it runs on here like this so um, it had a few scores in it where obviously something dirt's got in it or something so we'll wash this This is probably the, early, the dirtiest bearing because this is the one you could reach to put oil in. 
And that's another good reason to, to pack them with grease is that is that they fill up one of them is a bit difficult to get to around the back of the machine. So I haven't cleaned this up on the end and I've sort of had trouble setting it up to do that. So I might do that when it's on the machine again. I set up a tool and do it with the table. Just take five thou off the end to clean it up. So first job I guess is to pack these up. I haven't got a new pot of grease because the last new pot of grease I bought went in my grease gun, so I'm gonna just pinch a bit out of the back of that. I don't tend to skimp on grease very much as try and get the best we possibly can, this black awful stuff. Uh, which has got some molybdenum in it, I think. And you want to get some inside the actual rollers. It doesn't need a lot in it. But I think not being an expert or anything, but I think if you're going to do a job like this, Google's your friend. Um, and lots of clean rag. So putting this back together, try and get a little bit inside the actual race rather than just around the outside of the balls because it won't really navigate in. It'll always work out at speed. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed to my channel recently. Really appreciate that. And everyone who's given me a shout out. As that's awesome. I'm part of an amazing community and clicking that subscribe button kind of makes you part of what it does. It makes you part of the community too. And we're very blessed to be to be part of this. So just go and do it. I reckon that's got probably enough grease in it to make it work. So it's got this plate here with the the gap in it for the oil, which we probably won't need. That goes on there like that. This plate here, which is the outside plate, goes on here like this. So that's the, the sandwich, I guess. This is on the outside of the machine. And this, this cover plate, four bolts through there tapped into there they keep all this together and stop everything turning so let's find the four bolts so there's four short bolts and four long bolts the long ones go in the front and they're all a bit knocked about. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time here now. Just cleaning the screw heads up and things, especially on the front ones that you can see. I'll give them a rub with a fire. Just so the screwdriver fits again properly. Well, I didn't feel much of putting this back together because there was a lot of bad language and some very ungracious thoughts about English engineers, to be honest. Uh, there's some stupid design problems with this. There's two wood rough keys hold this pulley on. Two wood rough keys. And they're in there out of sight and you can't quite get fingers in there to, to, to line them up or see where the keyway is. So you've got to guess that a bit. I agree, put them in with a bit of grease and had about 10 attempts and ended up dropping them off dropping them down inside that hole there which is just a little bit deeper than your arm is long so if you're thinking about if you're thinking about taking the Centec Miller machine apart take it apart properly and I probably should have done that take the the base or the the Miller machine column off the base and lay it down on the side and spend some time putting it together again properly. And while you've got it done, paint it if it needs it, whatever, strip it down, clean it up, 
scrape it. Do it once. I've done this and I intended to do the rest at some point, but right now I'm thinking it's going to last, wait a little bit longer. The main issue is with these four screws in the front here. Sorry about the flickering flashlight again. But these screws are all neat, like good fits in, in the holes through here and then in the threads at the end. So it's a bit of a challenge to get everything lined up so it works. I'm going to have a bit of a rant about English engineering because I've run across it before. And my dad always used to say that the difference between between English cars and, and American cars or Australian cars is bolt hole clearance. And that's probably why the, the English motor industry self-destructed is because you can't line stuff up with, a, with dowel pins and expect it all to go back together when you could use a a screwdriver and get one hole started and lift the rest up and make the others fit which is the, the essential difference between the way the English made things and the way the Americans or the, the way the Australians made things especially with motor cars so that's just my opinion don't intend to hurt anyone but kind of how it is <laughs> don't start me on the Americans next so this is all back together it's been it's taken me probably three hours to put these bearings back together because everything's got to line up and go through that hole and the woodruff keys have got to fit in there without falling out and then when they do fall out, you've got to do them again. The bearings need to be a, a pretty good fit on the shaft and they all need to, to slide together and everything is held in place by, by lateral force in the right spots. But it all seems to go together pretty nice and, and now it's together have a look there's two nuts on the outside that by pure dumb coincidence and sheer luck my launch pins benefits so that new wood rough key in there and then that all screws together and this basically preloads it against this back bearing and then you tighten the top up on the front I think to, to preload the top bearing and get everything so that it doesn't Quite pinch up and then tighten it a bit more so a lot of messing around but anyway thought I'd like to share I hope this hasn't been too boring for anyone big thanks to all my new subscribers uh, and big thanks to anyone who wants to watch this comments gratefully accepted and I promise that I'll have a go at another minority group next time and more soon guys and girls be kind to each other and Hit the like button.